new, 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 new. New, 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 new. New, 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 new. That's pretty good. All right, first up. Okay, we've got a couple accessories this week. Um, this is a WFL slash IPX3 slash MHF3 um, to RP SMA adapter. Uh, we have um, our handy uh, ESP32 feather with a, a WFL connector, not UFL, WFL, it's smaller. Um, and this little adapter has an RP SMA connector at the end because that's what's used for almost all Wi-Fi adapters, uh, sorry, Wi-Fi antennas. Check your antenna, make sure it's got the right polarity. Usually it's this way. And then this is the other side. It looks like UFL, but it's not UFL. It's WFL. So let me show. WFL, that's my favorite radio station. I know. <laughs> Let's look at the, um, look at this on the overhead. Hold on, let me just focus lock. Okay. Um, so this is the board and, uh, you know, there's no onboard antenna. Instead, there's this little uh, connector, but you want to maybe have it in a box and have an external uh, you know, standard uh, two to five dBi antenna. Um, this will do the job and then this is panel mountable. Uh, so this is great for um, adding a very good antenna, you know, any kind of size antenna you want to the Feather ESP32. Um, you know, you want something Wi-Fi and you want it to go a couple miles, just get a really big antenna, you're good to go. All right, next up. Uh, next up, we've got the Alps EC11J SMD potentiometer, sorry, uh, rotary encoder. Look at it, it looks like a potentiometer, but it's not, it's a rotary encoder. Um, it's all SMT, it's got uh, 30 cool. detents per rotation, it is detenty, got a D shaft on there. Um, and it's also got the button press, so it's kind of like an all-in-one rotary encoder. Um, it's about the price of a rotary encoder, but what's nice is it's fully surface mount. Now, it's not going to be as mechanically strong as a through-hole rotary encoder, and especially if you're doing a ton of twisting. But that said, there are some situations where you just, you really need to use a surface mount process for this, or you have something on the other side and you can't have through-hole pads going through. Um, you know, this does have um, really big pads on the bottom. You can see... Um, you know, there's basically one, two, three, four corner pads and then two side pads that are really chunky. Um, put a ton of paste down there and uh, connect it to a big ground plane. Um, and there's also a uh, locating dot as well to help keep it in place. Um, you'll be able to have a surface mount rotary encoder. I thought this would be a fun, probably useful for somebody okay. type product. And uh, stars of the show-ish because, that, you know, that was a code tonight was pro clip. Are these? These are some probe clips. Um, you know, I thought these would be handy for, you know, you're programming a board, you don't, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always like holding like the, I'm holding like these extra long headers on or wires on and uh, it's kind of tough, but you don't want to solder to it for some reason. Um, so these probe clips, uh, there's two kinds. So start at the beginning and we'll just talk about this one. So this is a six pin long 0.1 inch spacing. So this is kind of what you're going to probably use for a lot of uh, microcontroller boards or dev boards where they just put the programming pins in a row. Um, the depth of the board can be one inch or so from the uh, pogo pins and then they come up to the top into the, the you know these pogo pin um, sockets that you can then just plug in. Um, yeah you can plug in any uh, socket header into. So I just showed this with like a breakout board. You have, you know, if you have a breakout you're like I don't really don't want to solder this. Uh, you clip on it gives you a really good grip. Um, and then you just plug wires or you can solder wires onto this and when you're done, um, you're done. And if you design your board with this in mind, you put the headers on the edge, you know, or one inch away from um, the edge, um, you can just clip on, program. You may not even need to have a, a jig for programming. You can just use this instead. The second version, you want me to show yeah, the let's go to that. The second version is a, um, uh, 0.05 inch spacing, two by five. So this is like what I call SWD pinout spacing or JTAG spacing. Um, so this is finer pitch, but you know, a lot of boards already have this pinout on them. So uh, you may be able to take advantage of it. And also some people like to leave the pads in so uh, folks can solder in a through hole SWD connector. Um, it also gives you about an inch from the edge of the PCB. Um, and then instead of, you know, obviously you can't just plug in, uh, you know, the pins do come up, but you can't really easily plug to them. Uh, so what it does instead is it has uh, a separate two by 5.1 inch header spacing 
um, that you can plug wires into uh, to connect to your JTAG programmer. So um, this is uh, an example, like here I've got these uh, pads. This is an ideal, you know, you should probably use through hole pads, not surface mount pads. Um, but you know, you can actually get it to line up and uh, touch the two by five and, um, oops, hold on. I'll get it to line up. There you go. Um, get it to line up without soldering on and then uh, connect wires to these headers. Uh, if you want to say program this STM32 F405 over SWD and then, you know, you just use your right angle um, USB cable. I mean, of course I designed this board before I had the clip. If I was doing it again, I would do it from, you know, the right hand side. Um, so I just clip in like that, but um, you know, still this, was, this will work fine for um, many boards. You can see about one inch of depth of feather is about 0.9 inches. So that's how far you can go into the, um, the depth of the PCB and still clip on. Okay, and clippy, that clippy. is new products.